Welcome, my name is Lisa Davis, Regional Vice President with Arbonne, professional makeup artist and licensed esthetician. Today we are gonna make a salad together. Now I have done this video before for those of you who are in the 30 Days to Healthy Living, a training on meal prep and of course if you're creating your salad bar every day. But every time I make a salad on Instagram stories or I post a picture of a salad, people always ask what's the recipe. And so I thought, let's go over it today. First of all, there really is no recipe for my salad. My secret is, is that I literally go to my refrigerator, I, I pull out every single vegetable that I've got, and I throw it in a bowl, and I mix it together. But I thought, maybe you want a little bit more detail and some tips and tricks for what I like every single day, because I have a huge salad every single day. So let's go over that. So first, let's start with the greens. There's three kinds of greens that I buy. Now, I normally buy organic greens at Costco, just because we go through so many spring mix, organic greens that we like to get the big package. This week I got them at Publix because they were two for five dollars and so I bought four and that'll hold me over especially because we use a lot of greens in our daily smoothie as well. But I do a spring mix and I'm also going to do arugula today. So ooh, let's go ahead and open it and we're going to mix them up in our bowl. I take a nice heaping size because I really don't pay attention to um, serving size when I'm eating salad. I just eat as much as I possibly can, and it's so filling. Just um, a little tip for you on your bowls and stuff like that. I use a very large bowl to mix everything up, and I also keep them in one spot. We talk a lot about through the first 30 Days to Healthy Living about making your kitchen easy for health, making it convenient, and organizing, and keeping everything together. And so when it comes to salads, all the bowls are stored right underneath the counter where I'm going to make all of my salads. So I've got about four of these bowls. Um, and then we've got our mixing tongs right here. We've got all of our oils. I'm going to show you. All of my oils are here in a basket ready to go. And then, of course, the refrigerator is right here. Now, when I pull out, pull out the refrigerator in the very bottom of the refrigerator, is one large drawer. Um, you guys have probably seen pictures of it if you follow me on Instagram. Um, it's where I keep all of my vegetables. I call it my salad bar, that big drawer that pulls out, and that's where I keep all my veggies. So I'm going to get peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, radishes, carrots, um, every vegetable that I can get at the farmer's market, and it's all going to be stored at the very bottom. That way, all I have to do is pull it out and put it in. All right, so the next salad we're, or lettuce that we're going to use is arugula. All right. For uh, those of you who are maybe novice salad makers, I do not use any iceberg and I very rarely even use romaine anymore. I will buy romaine, but I try to um, do as much arugula, spring mix, spinach, um, Swiss chard, and kale as possible. You can get at Costco the baby packages, it's called Power Greens, which I'm out of right now, and that has all the baby versions, so it's not as tough. And those are really great to throw in your smoothies as well as your salads, but those types of lettuce have so many more so much more nutrition packed into them that I really try to get that bang for my buck. So I really don't use any iceberg and, very, and very, like I said, very little romaine. Arugula is such a great lettuce, which I did not know this until recently, that it is a cruciferous vegetable. It's not actually in the lettuce family. So it's kind of like eating broccoli or cauliflower. And you know that I want as many nutrients into every meal that I can get. And so I'm gonna use arugula today, put that in. Now, a quick meal um, prep tip for you, and it helps with um, compiling your salads so that you don't have to pull everything together every single time you're gonna make a salad, is at the beginning of the week, I go ahead and chop um, certain things, just certain things, <laughs> all right? Because we don't want things getting mushy, and I don't ever experience mushiness, so I'm just gonna show you what I um, have cut. Oh, and it smells so good. This is, um, cherry tomatoes, which I got at the farmer's market, cucumbers from the farmer's market, and red onion from the farmer's market. These three things go in every single salad that I make. I put salt and pepper on top of this already, and it's already in a big bowl ready to be mixed in with the salad. Now, the reason I also do this is because this makes it a great side dish. You can mix it with quinoa and make a cold salad. And so the way that it's already prepped is easy to just throw on. So, what I will typically do, so I'm gonna show you how I do it, is I make a big bowl of the quinoa at the very beginning of the week. The one that I made this week is the organic tricolor quinoa from Trader Joe's. Let's put this over here so that I don't forget what I talked about. Put all those over there. And 
Every week I make one big pot of quinoa. And the reason is I use the quinoa in lots of different ways. You can put it into your salads, you can have it as a side dish, you can use it as a cold salad by mixing it with this here, which is what we're gonna do. Um, you can even make pancakes, um, breakfast cookies, those types of things all out of quinoa. So I love to have quinoa already cooked and ready. You can also buy it in the frozen section at Trader Joe's and just heat it up. But I actually like prefer to make it just like this. And I'm going to pour it right into my, my cold salad that I already prepped with my three vegetables. And that is typically what I would do. And I'll leave about half of it. So I'm gonna leave about half of it. The other half, I'm gonna mix in with my cucumbers, my tomatoes, and my red onions. And this will be a great side dish. We will go through this probably in two or three days. It goes really, really fast in our house. Plus my oldest daughter is a vegetarian, so there you go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just pour a good amount of the quinoa, tomatoes, cucumber, and red onion onto my salad. Now you can modify this based on what you like or don't like. I'm at the point where I really love every single vegetable. There's nothing I won't eat. And so I will just throw it on. I am gonna put more quinoa on there. Quinoa is like, to me, it's like the superfood of carbohydrates. It's the, you know, it's the best one in my, in my mind, but that's again a preference thing. Okay, so I'm gonna mix it in. You can see that so far. Then I do get the match, um, the matchstick carrots just because I don't wanna chop an additional item. I actually hate chopping. I wish somebody in my family would chop vegetables for me because I can't stand it. So I'm gonna put the carrots in there. I'm gonna move this over to the other side. And this is ready. Now, this could be just your salad prep by itself. If you work full time and you do and you do meal prep like we do, you could take your salad and take this and take your dressing. That way you could throw together a salad really, really fast. This takes a lot of steps out of your daily prep when it comes to salads. But we're both working from home right now. And so, this works for us. All right, move that out of the way. Next thing, I always put nuts in my salad, some kind of nut. My favorite is sunflower seeds or raw slivered almonds, and I also love pumpkin seeds, but I always put nuts because I want it to be as crunchy and as much variety as possible. So today I'm gonna use my sunflower seeds. I like a lot. Like I said, I don't pay attention to my serving sizes because I am pretty much only eating vegetables and seeds and nuts are fantastic for you. All right, so the next thing I'll do is I'm probably gonna chop an additional tomato just because I didn't put a whole lot of tomato in that quinoa thing, but I'll do that in a minute. We'll just leave that to the side. All right, the next thing is I am gonna put a little cheese. I do not have traditional dairy really ever. Um, we in our home eat goat cheese and goat or sheep cheese, so um, this feta will be perfect. I'm gonna use a small amount, and the reasons are the different proteins that are in the different milks that come from the different animals, which we've talked a lot about in the 30 Days to Healthy Living. Case in A1, case in A2, what's easier on the digestive system. And um, with my digestive issues, cheese is not one of the things I can have a whole lot of. I do love cheese, and, so I, and I like the variety of flavor in my salad, so I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit. And guys, this is gonna be enough for two people, okay? So this is not just my salad. <laughs> All right, and then when it comes to dressing, now that's where most people really have problems because they still wanna use traditional dressings like Thousand Islands and Ranch and stuff like that. I will say it took me quite a long time to get to the point where I made my own dressings and really loved the flavor of just salad. Your tastes do change over time, so um, trust the process. If it's a slow pro um, transition for you, that's okay. Um, if you haven't tried the Primal Kitchen um, dressings, these are fantastic. They're, I get mine from Thrive Market, which is an online grocery store. I'll put the link in the video so that you can go there. But we use all of the different sauces from Primal, um, Primal Kitchen. But I actually prefer to make my own dressing. And the reason is I don't like my dressings to be overpowering. I want it to be very basic tasting so that when I eat my salad, it really, I can taste mostly the flavor of the um, different vegetables and not the overpowering, more acidic type of dressings. I like mine to be more olive oil than acid. So I don't put a ton of lemon and lime in mine. I'll be honest, if you like lemon and lime, that's great, add that. I do not add a ton of balsamic. Um, again, because I like mine to be very bland tasting. So I use a lot of extra virgin olive oil. I've got bold here, I've got robust. I've also got the infused type, so you can get olive oil infused, lemon infused, shallot, shallot infused, 
I use all of them. I use them for everything. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to use robust. Now I have all these different salad, um, like salad dressing makers that I always end up going back to like just a little tiny small bowl. And I put about, you know, maybe a third olive oil in there. And then you can either use fresh garlic with a garlic press, or you can use the garlic out of um, a jar. Crush is always best, of course, but for sake of quickness, we're gonna use the jar today. You can also make your dressing once a week, which I do a lot of times and just store it in the fridge. That way it's ready to just be poured on. Yeah, it takes a little extra time. This whole healthy living thing, you have to plan ahead. You know, you cannot leave your health in the hands of others. I've said it a thousand times, but it's just the truth. You have to take the extra time for yourself and for your family to eat well. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix in that garlic. The other thing that I will mix in and that I do really love are the Trader Joe's dressings, especially the almond turmeric and the green goddess. Both of these absolutely love. So sometimes just to cut the, and add a little bit of extra flavor, I'll mix a little bit of the almond turmeric or the Greek goddess in. All right, so either one of those, those are really great dressings as well. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna add is pepper. All right, lots of pepper, All right? Lots of pepper, okay. And then the other thing that we use a lot in this house is real salt by Redmond's. I absolutely love the salt. It's so funny because Ford will actually lick the top of our salt shaker because he loves the salt too. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of this out. We've got it in all of our salt shakers, but I don't know where they are right now all over the place and I'm going to drizzle it on the salad and put it in the salad dressing as well. Okay, mix it up. If you want to put a little balsamic in there, that's totally fine. If you... I taste this again. It's funny, I, I really don't like to taste balsamic vinegar that much. I'm sure Stafford would disagree with me, but I don't like it that much. Okay, so I've mixed it up. I'll go ahead and pour a little bit on. And then I'm gonna toss it. Now, the only other thing that we will put on our salads is possibly these um, hard boiled organic eggs. I'll put these on the side. I get these at Costco um, just to add a little bit extra texture, more, a little more protein. But um, I really don't eat meat in my salads anymore. I've really tried to move to where mostly, mostly vegetables and the meat is a very side, a small side item. Um, Dr. Mark Hyman calls it a condiment. So it's a condiment, <laughs> you know, um, and then everything else on my plate is vegetables. And that's why we do so many smoothies in our house because smoothies are a great way to power pack um, raw fruits and vegetables into a breakfast meal instead of grains and carbohydrates. You stay full for a really long time. So typically a smoothie is my very first meal after my workout. And then about two o'clock, which is about two o'clock in the afternoon right now, it's time for lunch and that'll be a huge salad. Again, I don't pay attention to the serving size. I just eat until I'm full. And then I might have a fizz stick in the afternoon if I'm feeling a little sluggish, which very rarely happens anymore because you just need that little jolt. And then we eat dinner about six o'clock and we usually grill some type of meat and have um, three fourths of our plate filled with a roasted vegetable. And then I stop eating after dinner and fast my at least full for t um, 12 to 14 hours in at night time. All right, so this salad is ready to go. I'm gonna put it in our big bowls and then we're gonna eat. And I just wanna make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I'm sure you guys will ask your questions if there is something I've forgotten. But for those of you who meal prep with me every week, remember you are gonna meal prep your salad bar by making sure that your fridge is fully stocked with all of your vegetables. You're going to meal prep a healthy carbohydrate like our um, yummy quinoa over here. You're gonna meal prep some sort of sweet item, which I did last night, which is my homemade protein bar bars. You're going to get your smoothie recipes, um, all of those supplies ready and all of that organized because that's a whole other area of my kitchen. <laughs> and then you're gonna make um, a couple meals. So, and they can be super, super easy. It can be a turkey meatloaf. Um, it can be steaks and roasted vegetables. It does not have to be complicated. It's something that you have to follow. Um, and then you're gonna pack your cooler or make sure that there's snacks everywhere. You've got snacks in your car, snacks in your personal cooler, snacks in your desk drawer at work, 
That way you're never stuck in a situation where you're stark. All right, there we go. Sorry, a little glitch there. Okay, if you have questions though, make sure and comment. I will definitely answer and I hope you have a great weekend meal prepping because that's what it's all about. It's just preparing and being and, and thinking ahead so that we can stay healthy.